Greetings YouTube, my name is Alex and I am the Reef Dog. And today I'm giving you an update of my Nano Reef. And this is a blue light special, so I will show you what it's looking like, just like this as standard, but I'll also show you what the corals look like under blue lights. Now I'm sticking with the format that I created last time round, so you will, this will be broken down into uh, equipment, livestock, parameters and future plans. Only this time what I'm going to do is put links in the description to the times of each section. So if you want to skip through to, to the livestock section, click on the link in the description and it will take you straight to it. If you want to skip to the parameters etc you can do so and you can jump around the bits that you want to see and the bits you want to miss. In equipment I'm going to tell you about using the Sennheiser PAR meter and things I've done to quiet down the tank a little bit. In livestock I will talk you through a couple of new additions and tell you about some of the things that I've got that are, are improving and are showing better health. In parameters I'll tell you how the ALR1 is getting on on its own without a skimmer to help it and I'll also tell you what the PAR results are from the, uh, from the, uh, the Senai. And finally in future plans stick around for that because I'm going to tell you what my upgrade is going to be like. That's probably coming in six months time or so but I'll give you a bit of a flavour of the sort of thing I'm after. Let's start off with them with equipment. So as I said with the equipment I've done a couple of things. I have firstly reduced the power heads from 100% to 20%. Uh, the purpose of that was to make the corals a bit happier but also to see if it would make the tank a bit quieter and that's worked really well. As you can see I'm still getting a reasonable amount of movement uh, and water flow uh, but more to the point the pumps are a bit quieter. They're still a little bit noisy but they're okay. The other tweak I've done is the lights. So now the lights are now at 80%. Before that they were on 40%. Let me show you what that looks like. There we are down then to 40% and you can see how much dimmer it is. When I had it running at 40% at first it actually looked pretty bright but since turning it up it's gone really bright and it looks actually a lot better. The reason I had it quite low is because I you always hear that LEDs need to be run lower and this is mainly a softy tank and a few LPS but now I've got a clam I need to crank that up and actually I found that it's absolutely fine with the lights bumped up. So let's crank that back up to 80% again and see what we're like running now. So as you can see it is a lot brighter and it looks really good and I suspect the clam will be much happier with higher lighting levels but I'll tell you about that in the livestock and parameters section. And the only thing I've added to the tank this time round is an auto feeder. Now putting an auto feeder on a tank like this is a little bit difficult because there's no real way of attaching it to uh, the rim of the tank with the uh, with the little uh, DIY cover on it. So I've had to break out my ingenuity and attach it to the Kessel gooseneck. Let's see what that looks like. Now I just want to quickly tell you about one other piece of equipment that I've got in the tank. It's not a new piece of kit as such but it's the Senai PAR meter. Now I'm using this later on in the parameter section so I'll show you how it works and what it looks like then but I just wanted to quickly tell you about my thoughts on it. I've had it for a few months now and I find actually it's the sort of thing that is really useful very occasionally but actually it's probably the sort of thing that would be better to be able to borrow from a friend. I've put a link in the description but I think this is quite an expensive buy new, particularly given that you need the web server, which is another hundred and something quid, in order to get updates if the temperature drops or anything like that, or if the water level drops in your sump. So it's not really a great uh, new buy, but what I would suggest you do, and this is what I did, I bought it secondhand on eBay, I set up a search and waited for the right one to come along at the right price, and then I bought that. But anyway, I'll show you what the, uh, the PAR results look like later on, and it's really good for that. Now one last piece of equipment I've got to tell you about is not really a tank, uh, it's not really tank equipment at all um, but it is a new lens for my DSLR. Now this is a, a macro lens, it's a 105mm Sigma macro lens and it is fantastic. The quality of the photos I'm getting is brilliant. I'm not a great photographer but you don't really need to be when you've got something like this. Now th this isn't really relevant for the video but I'm on Instagram and I'm on Ultimate Reef and I put lots of photos up there so links in the description check that out if that's your thing. Now that's me done for equipment 
Now let's take you to the interesting stuff, the livestock, a look at the tank, and a look at the corals under blues. So we'll come on to the blue lights in just a sec, but before we do that, I wanna show you the new livestock I brought in. There is a bright green zoa that is bang in the center of the screen at the moment, but you won't be able to see it very well. And I'll show you what that looks on the blues because it looks a lot better. But there's also a new fish that some of you might have seen, bottom left hand corner. Let's get a closer look. So here he is then, he's a little royal grammar. This is a tiny one. Uh, he's probably about a quarter of the size of all of my other fish. So he's a little bit intimidated and they're quite shy anyway. Um, all he does at the moment is hang around that little ledge there because the bit that the rock that the clam is on is his little hiding space. So he darts back inside every now and then. But he's a really cool fish. I don't want uh, this tank to be completely full of fish that will always be out in the open. I like it when they're going in there like that, like he does, and then coming out the side, as you can see around the back. I think that adds a bit more character. Uh, and this guy also adds some excellent, excellent colors. Nice, bright purple and a nice bright bit of orange yellow as well. So he's a really nice addition. I'm really pleased with him. And actually, now he's taken us over here. Let me tell you the, uh, the other bit of livestock information I wanted to give you. In fact, let's get a bit closer. And here we are over in Acan Corner. Now, I've moved these Acans from fairly close to the center right over to the far corner. The reason for that is to reduce the amount of light they're getting and reduce the amount of flow. And I've also turned down the power heads, as I said earlier. Uh, and as a result, these have really blossomed. Now, the one on the right is not showing as much polyp extension as it has been, probably because it's still relatively early in the day and it's waking up. But the two on the left, let's just move the camera around a wee bit and zoom in on the green one. They are looking really good, really healthy. The polyps are nicely extended and the colors are looking good. The one at the back, the green one, is called a pink dragon. Supposedly that has flecks of pink in it. You can see some flecks of pink if you look very carefully, but I think it's gonna take a bit of time for that to come out. But I'm really pleased that these have come out a bit better and are now looking a bit brighter and a bit happier. Now, I did also have a couple of hammer corals, some little frags of euphilia. Uh, but I've had to move them on. I couldn't find the right spot for them. They were always getting too much flow. So I decided that there wasn't space for them in the tank and they had to shift on. They probably would have liked the spot that the Acans are in, but tough luck, Acans are better. So I've got rid of them and now those are my only pieces of LPS. That's all I've done on the livestock this time round. Now let's move on to the blues. And here we are then under blue lights. This is as blue as this uh, light goes. So let's see how it goes with the camera. Now, get a bit closer. Here we go, let's check them out. Now we all know that zoas look awesome under blues and here is a prime example. These are mohawk zoas. Let me just adjust the camera a little bit. And they kind of look like the Milky Way. There's a really nice purple glow. And I'll see if I can zoom in without losing too much quality. There we go, look at that. It looks like outer space, it's brilliant. Really like these guys. They look fantastic and this is on the blue so it looks awesome at night and when they're waking up in the morning let's check out a few others next up then is the speckled rainbows again let's zoom in a bit how good do they look they're glowing really brightly you can't quite see in the camera but you can get a general idea and i think they look fantastic now let's have a quick peek at the mount krakazoa for this what i'm going to have to do is turn the power heads off so the flow isn't too bad and doesn't distort the colors. Let's have a look. So here we are, Mount Crackers are in fact, first off, let's go on the frag rack. So I'm actually gonna be selling some of these frags, possibly with the exception of the one, that one there, the top left-hand corner, the others are all going. The recorder on the right just hasn't settled in my tank, don't really know why, but all of these guys are probably gonna be moving on. Although every time I see the bottom right-hand corner ones, the orange securers, rainbow securers, I think they look really cool. Anyway, this is over to the tank now. That green guy, that's the new one I was telling you about that I bought recently. There's only one head at the moment, but it will look really cool and it is bright green. Now the other zoas I've got then, I'll talk you through all the names and all that sort of stuff. Utter Chaos there, right in the center. Next to them are Rasters. Now the Utter Chaos are reasonably slow growers, but they're doing okay. They've probably roughly doubled in size in two months or so. The rasters, on the other hand, they are slow growers. 
I think I've grown one head in about two months. So they're taking their time. That in the middle there now is a rainbow Montipora and that is not doing too well. Uh, probably because it wasn't getting enough light. See if it does a little bit better now I've turned the lights up a bit. Next on the zoas though, here we go, scrambled eggs. Lovely bright yellow colour. You don't get many yellow zoas, so that's a really nice one. And then on to the pink ones again. Not many pink ones, although there are a few around. These are alien anti-venom. Uh, actually, go back to the scrambled eggs. They've doubled in size easily in a couple of months, so they're doing really well. And the alien anti-venom, yeah, they've done okay. They've probably grown three heads, I'd guess, in a couple of months, so that's okay. And then finally, a zoe that everyone scoffs at actually, uh, whamming watermelons. I think these look really cool. And when they spread out loads, they look fantastic. So they're a nice one actually, and they do glow quite brightly. So that's what we're looking like under blues. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, I do need to put more zoas on this rock. I've actually taken a few off, as you can see, and put them up there, uh, and I need to put some more on. But what I want to do is get perhaps some other different ones, some nicer, higher quality ones, and wang them on. But I'll figure that out later. Now, before we go back to the white lights, I'll do a quick head top-down shot of uh, some of the other zoas and the acans, and then we'll be done. So first off, well, they're, they're the, uh, the speckled rainbows. Can't really see them that well. Um, and you really can't see <laughs> the mohawks that well, but hey, that's what it is. There's the clam. Clam does glow a little bit. I'm looking at it off the camera and it glows quite nicely, kind of a turquoise color, but doesn't really show up on the old uh, camera. And finally, here's the Aiken Garden. You can probably just about see that's glowing, but it doesn't really show up on the camera. Let's go just down by the side, see if that makes a difference. There we go. So you can see now there is a bit of glow at least, certainly in a red one, and even with a green one and to an extent the blue one. So all in all, looking pretty good under blues, and that's probably the time that we all enjoy the most, isn't it, when the tanks are under blues? So I hope that's given you a reasonable idea of what it looks like under the Kessels. So the last couple of bits I've got to tell you about today are the parameters and then the future plans. Parameters, so nitrate is around five parts per million, maybe a little bit higher, so that's holding steady and phosphate is 0.05, which is down a little bit from 0.06. Now, I think what that shows is that the algae reactor is doing all right on its own, bear in mind I don't want a skimmer as well, but the algae reactor is doing all right on its own with phosphate and nitrate. I do have a row of phos, uh, do have row of phos running in a reactor at the moment, but that's been going for about a month, and from what I understand, it's not effective after more than a week or so. So I think I'm right in saying that the algae reactor is doing well on, uh, on the phosphate on its own. Good job. The other thing I need to tell you about, of course, is PAR readings. Now, I'm gonna dive straight into showing you how that works so you can see exactly what I've done and I'll read out the, uh, the PAR readings as we go along. Let's have a look. Now, I've had the Senai for about three or four months, same sort of time as I bought the setup. Reason I wanted it was to test the light, see what kind of levels I was getting. But also at the start, it was really good as an ammonia checker and it was reasonably interesting to see pH levels, although that's really gone out the window and I don't care about that. However, having bought it as a, a PAR meter, I haven't used it once. So this is the first time I'm doing it. Let's see what it looks like. Now, to do it, you connect the Senai to your computer, which is out of shot. And on the computer, you load up the app and I'll record the screen so you can see what it looks like. And that tells you the readings. I'm just gonna go through this now, tell you what the readings are coming out as, and then I'll show you the screen. So let's have a look. So the most important one then, the clam. Let's see what he comes in at. Shrivels away as I adjust this. Uh, 315, 230, 207, 260. The screen changes quite a lot, so it's hard to get a, an accurate idea, but you get a rough idea. And then moving back to Mount Krakazoa, what have we got there? 218, 201, 209, 185. You know, not bad. Right down on the sound bed, let's have a look at that and see what that comes out as. 200, 193, 209, that's all right. Uh, what about the frag rack? Let's see what that comes in as. Yeah. 124, 144. So reasonable levels and finally if I can do this and this is one of the tricky things you've got to watch out getting your arm in the way and blocking the light 
other side of the tank, let's see what that comes in at. Right in the corner, a way down, 110, 117, 100. That's all right, nice and low. So that's how the semi works to, to measure par. And it's a really useful guide. It's a very rough guide and it's very difficult to get an exact figure, but it's a good general overview. And the key thing with this is when I had my lights on at 40%, that clam was getting par of around 100, 150, far too low. Now I've checked, I know that it needs to go up and it's now getting par of around 250. So I know it's more or less there. It could probably benefit from a bit more, but thanks to the Senai, I now know how much light I'm getting and how much light I need. Absolutely invaluable bit of kit. Don't know if I'll use it much going forward, but just as that one-off test, brilliant. Well done, Senai. And this is what your computer looks like when the meter is taking its readings. The bit you're interested in is the top left-hand corner, of course, the par figure. This is when I was holding it above the clam, so it goes from 225 up to 315, and then back down again. And there's quite a wide range there. I guess you can probably take an average, maybe, and you can have a rough idea, but it doesn't really give you a precise idea. And having watched a few BRS TV videos, I thought it was going to be exact, but I guess what they do is fix it in place so it's completely still, whereas I'm probably twitching my hand a little bit. But either way, it does give you a rough idea, and for that, it is absolutely invaluable. But don't expect to be, uh, don't expect it to be as accurate as you might have thought. So, last but not least, then is future plans. Now, a couple of future plans for this tank. One, I'm thinking of getting a little bit of GSP to go on one of the Zoarox that is now free. The idea is that that might not spread because it's isolated on an island. Let me know if you've got experience with GSPs, if it's spread even though it's isolated. I don't want it to take over the tank like it can do, but I would like a little patch. Um, that's about it in terms of my plans for livestock. What I do want to do though is put a bit of a rescape in, or well, I'm thinking about doing a bit of a rescape to put the clam up a bit higher. I'm either going to put it on its own little rock so it lifts it up a couple of inches, or maybe move this bommy over here to the centre uh, so it raises up a good few inches. And if I were to do that, then I could introduce another piece of rock which I have here. And this, let's see if you can see, go around the back of the camera to see. Yeah, you can. So I've drilled a few frag plug holes in there. And the plan with this is that it will take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frags uh, of Zoas. And this will be Mount Cracker Zoa part two. I've made a couple of mistakes on, on the first one. Number one, it's got no levels. It's all at one level right at the top. Whereas with this, it's got one, two, three, four separate levels. So a bit more depth and a bit more interesting. Also with this, because I've got the frag plug holes, I can plug them straight in so they're flat, and when they spread off the frag plug, I can pull the frag plug out and sell it on to another reefer. So I'm thinking about doing that, but if I do do that, it will mean there is no negative space whatsoever, and I'm not sure if I want to do that. So I'll have a think about that in the coming weeks. The only other thing I'm thinking about as well is introducing a manifold. I want to put in a, a bigger return pump and run everything, so the algae reactor and the cheetah and the phosphate reactor off that, and also have another section that I can plug in to do a uh, to do water changes. I don't know if I'm going to do that because introducing a manifold to an existing tank is going to be quite difficult. You need all the solvent to dry and so on and so forth, but I'd like to do it. And if I don't do it on this tank, I will definitely do it on my next tank. And that segues very nicely into my upgrade plans. So this is what I call the interim tank. And it's called the interim tank because I got bored of not having a tank and I wanted something to tide me over. But I will be moving house in probably six months time or so. And when I do that, I will be upgrading to maybe a four foot tank, possibly a five foot tank, trying to convince myself to go four foot. Five might be too expensive, but it will be something like a Red Sea Reefer uh, a 425 XL or a 625 XXL, something like that, maybe an Evolution Aqua. And to give you an idea of the sort of thing that I'm going to be doing with it, I'll leave you with a little shot of my previous tank, which was a four foot SPS dominated tank. Now, this will give you a rough idea of sort of the fish I like, the shapes I like and all that sort of stuff. But I did make a few mistakes and I'm not entirely happy with that. So the new tank will have better SPS better fish and it will have a better scape but this will just give you a rough idea 
Anyway, that's me done for now. Thanks very much for watching, really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe and watch out for future content. Until next time then, I have been The Reef Doc. Thank you, good night.